so I have left store number one and decided not to film there. Um, that store is the big Goodwill that I usually film in, but today it was quite crowded and I decided to put my head down and really go for clothing. So I did wind up getting a cart full of clothing, which I will show you guys in a haul. But then I thought to myself, huh, where do I want to go next? So I decided to come up north to a little thrift store that is like a country thrift store. Now it is a Goodwill, but it's in an older building. I think I might have filmed there last year. The floors are wooden, the racks are tight together, but I have found quite a bit of treasure there. Now this is the East Earl location, I believe. You can Google it and see photos of it on Google Images, that it's just this country out in the middle of nowhere Goodwill. It's just amazing that it's out there. And I have found quite a bit of treasure there. So not only do I find vintage items, but I have to say that the vintage items go quicker because country people out this way have a tendency to know vintage items. What doesn't sell as quick are the more modern items usually. So that's what I'm after today. That's what I'm expecting to find. Trendy clothing, not sure where it comes from because the people in the area are mainly Amish, Mennonite, and country folk, farm owners. So I doubt they're wearing <laughs> like Prada or Chanel. So that's where we are now. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to film. That's why I'm making this intro to take you along with me, see what treasure we can find and look for a profit. So this is the little Goodwill, the country Goodwill that is out in East Earl. This is north of me, always worth a trip and always fun to travel to see what we can find. All right, let's go in, hopefully I can film. Okay, so at the time of recording the voiceover for this video, there happened to be workmen, construction men, working on the house in back of my house. So if you hear any kind of banging or men talking, <laughs> that's what that's about. Here I'm looking at the linens. I did see this quilt peeking out, but it was just mass marketed. Most times in this country store, I don't find linens that, you know, are really just wonderful and sitting there. I think the area people really know their quilts and their linens, so very rare to find it in this store. What I do like looking at is the men's clothing. So here I start down the racks. I always look for fleece, flannels, hoodies. Most times in this store, I won't find dress shirts of things like that. This is White Stag, I believe. That's a, a cheaper brand. These gray shoes caught my attention. $9.99, which is a little high, but the shoes were in very nice condition. This is Cole Haan. Cole Haan is a hit and miss for me. So I try to run a comp for the style. I thought the inner um, little banding there was very interesting. Looks like it really held your foot secure or it was a comfort thing. So this video, the filming of it happened. I did purchase and I did a haul of these items already. So we're a little backwards here, but I wanted to show you this footage so you could see what this East Earl Country Store had. If you're catching a glimpse in my cart, you can see a sweater that I've already hauled, you know, I already showed you guys and it has already sold. So a little bit backwards, some of the items in this video will be sold already, but you can always go into my store and if you see something in this video, you can check if it has been sold or not. So here is a sweater that you normally see alligators and it was a turtle. I thought that was quite cute. I did not pick it up. I don't know that a man would want to wear a turtle on his chest. These are polo, which I might have picked those up, but $15 is too high a buy-in price. A couple of times I have found better quality shoes in this store. I have found Allen Edmonds. I'm trying to think of what else I have found. A couple of brands of women's shoes 
that I was very amazed I found. I found teaks. Um, what else have I found here? I can't even think of it, but so I always do go through the shoes in this store. There I was looking at a Hawaiian shirt, hoping for it to be bark cloth. It was not. As you can see with this amount of clothing, there is no way I would have time to go, you know, item by item and look at tags. That's just not gonna happen with how packed these racks are. So I do try to use my eye and just spot either good prints or quality material. Generally, that's what I have to use in this store. Now this store does have a bin system, so items that have been sitting on the rack for a while do make it downstairs into their wooden bins. Here's a pair of bass loafers, and I am looking to see if they are Weijins. Weijins almost always are marked. I've talked about that style in one of my past videos, and they were not Weijins that I could tell. I think my favorite shoes of men's styles to sell are wingtips. So I always look at the wingtips. If you don't know what that is, you can Google. I thought these were very interesting. I also look for a brogue style. Uh, monk buckles are a very good seller. There I was showing you the bottoms of the soles. I look for shoes. Oh, here's a monk. Buckle right there. I didn't even realize this was gonna come up. See that double buckle? That's called a monk buckle, but those were not in good condition. Uh, back to soles. So when I look at the sole of a shoe, I'm looking for a leather sole. I don't think I found too much in men's clothing. And here I am onto women's clothing. In this area, a lot of the women wear longer denim skirts. So that's one of the main things that I look for. But because they wear them, I think there's a higher probability that they also buy them. When I first started selling, I used to pick up a lot of plaid skirts. I think this might be Brooks Brothers, it looks like them, either them or, yep, Brooks Brothers or J. Crew. I didn't care for the colorway. See the pastel colors? I like when this type of plaid, this mattress plaid, are in deeper colors. I will pick up tartan skirts, that's, you know, the wool skirts that are in a plaid um, for around Christmas time. LuLaRoe, once again. This is a taffeta skirt, good for the holidays, but because I'm not quite sure how many events are gonna happen, I, um, I did not take that. Okay, this is a weird shot. Here I'm showing a sweater that I've already hauled. I already showed this to you guys. This is me finding the sweater. This is Orvis. Here's a good shot of the tag and that sweater sold already. Underneath that sweater in the cart, I had a unicorn sweater, which I wound up putting back. The quality was really cheap. So here I'm finding a denim skirt. Elastic waist is always nice. I did not pick that up because the size was very small. Mostly in denim skirts, I'm looking for probably medium or large or bigger. Now this sweater was super interesting. It was almost like a popcorn print or a popcorn style. I'm not quite sure where, what I'm looking at now. I'm all over the place today. Oh, this must have caught my eye. Pink hunter boots, $15. I do well with the classic style hunter boots. You know, the ones to the knee in the darker color, mostly black or navy blue. 
here I'm finding a caftan that again I showed you guys in a video so this this really should have come out first but I wanted to show you this footage so I said I'm gonna go ahead and, and do this video this voiceover so you can see me finding the items I did pick up that caftan and that one sold I believe the register counted that caftan as a, uh, a nightgown, and I got that at a nightgown price. Here I'm finding the first Mennonite dress. And I was showing the overpiece. I do pick that up. Here is another apron dress. All of these dresses are handmade. If I can get these dresses for $4 and under, I go ahead and pick them up. I was looking at the stitching there. See that stitching there? That's an overcast stitch. That shows it was hand stitched on part of this dress. I don't know that I picked this one up. I felt there was a little bit of fading to the dress. I like the dresses, the homemade dresses, to be in really nice condition. So as you can see, tons of clothing in this store. Here is another Mennonite dress, and if you notice the tab, that little tab on the front, I should have showed that better. I'm not quite sure what that tab is for, so if you guys know, can you leave me a comment down below? Thank you. Here I'm finding Soma. I like finding Soma. So what is the disconnect? I'm not quite sure. I did not pick this up. I think I felt a little bit confused about it because most of the Soma I find are intimates. They're either negligees or nightgowns, and that one had a lot of beating on the bust, so I think I just felt confused. So right now I am kind of passing by any short sleeve shirts, tanks. Not that I won't put off season in my store, I will, but the profit capability for shirts that have short sleeves or tanks are not as high as the other inventory I can get this type of year. There I was looking at gold toe slippers, but they wanted too much and they had sun fade from sitting in that window. And now I have moved downstairs. The downstairs of this, or the basement of this store, I should say, are the hard goods and the wooden bins of clothing. It's their form of an outlet. Here I'm finding a, I don't know what these are called, 3D picture, 2D picture. There's a name to this of the Twin Towers. There was a date on the picture, and I did run a comp. This did not bring the money. So I did put it in my cart for a while to check, but I wound up putting that back. Now, as you can tell, I have an empty cart because in this store, you have to pay for the items upstairs and then start afresh downstairs. So I had paid for my clothing and uh, grabbed a new cart. I thought this chafing dish was pretty, but it did have a glass insert, very heavy. Does anybody think that the duck motif in kitchens is gonna come back? I <laughs> sure hope not. <laughs> I know people really got excited about that duck pattern. <laughs> we had duck wallpaper, canisters, we had it all. I don't know that I ever did ducks. I just, I never caught on to it. I think that was in the 80s, right? That, that tons of houses had the duck pattern. So as you can see, not a lot of high-end items on the shelf. 
but I do wind up finding things, so <laughs> there's a spoiler alert. I don't know that I would come to this store weekly, but I really do like taking a trip out here. It's a beautiful drive, and, um, and I have found good items. I once found an English smoking robe, I'm going to call it, and I found that robe in the wooden bin section. I believe I paid under a dollar, and it brought over a hundred dollars. And I believe it was 100% silk. I don't know who had an English smoking jacket out in farm country, but yes, please. Thought this was really pretty, this basket candy dish. And I did put that in my cart for a while because hummingbird patterns are really popular. But at the end, the Made in China sticker was just not happening in my brain. Not that I never pick up Made in China. Once in a while I do. I think to be able to learn blue china and dishes must be quite the education you need. I find so many blue dishes and the majority of them I don't buy because I don't know what I'm looking at. So I might never make it onto an episode of my Antiques Roadshow. <laughs> I was hoping that was a vintage jewelry box. Do you guys remember the jewelry boxes when you opened them up when you were a little girl and the ballerina danced around and around? I love finding those. Those don't bring a lot of money, but really sweet. I apologize that my filming is all over the place today. Getting a little glimpse of my sporadic, crazy way of thrifting. Here right away, I realized this is Ray Dunn. This is a set of drinking glasses. And I thought it was funny that the words on them, if you look at the melt glass, the wording, I thought was peeled off. But I think it's because the snowman was melting. Not entirely sure about that. So I do take these. I put these in my cart. As you can see, they wanted $4. And number one, I'm not thrilled with shipping drinking glasses. Lots of breakage lately with USPS. And the comps were not there. Now let me just say, if the comps were there, if the profit was high, you guys know me. I put my big girl pants on and get it done, but the comps were not high for those Ray Dunn glasses. Here I was looking at a little lidded jar. I was hoping there would be a potter's stamp on it, and I don't believe I found one. I don't know how many people would want a little jar that says Hanover. Here I'm looking at chickens. Chickens! <laughs> bog bog! <laughs> I think I look at every chicken figurine and statue that I find in thrift stores. And I do buy the better painted, the nicer painted uh, porcelain or ceramic ones. Oh, that was a rough piece. I thought these cups might have been Dansk, but they were not. Here I'm spotting a very heavy, I'm gonna call this a pie dish, right? Yeah. Now this did have a mark on the bottom. Louisville, come on camera. Louisville something, I missed what, what that said. I hope I turn that over again. Pies by Sally. And that pie dish must have weighed over 10 pounds. I kid you not, that thing was heavy. 
probably why I didn't zoom in on turning it over. I was probably having a hard time lifting it. And I did find them, but they didn't bring a lot of money. I got excited for these mugs, so excited. I wish my camera would focus, but the fourth one was broken. And as I really looked at them, they weren't they weren't really well made or high quality, but I did like these. That might have been a mistake not picking up two of them. Not that it would bring a really high profit, but I think that pattern is really good. Anything Western, Cowboys, Ranch. I think people really like that, that style. If I had a dollar for every bad gammon game I found in thrift stores, I could quit. I could retire. I guess this is like a butter crock. Five dollars I felt was high. And I'm wondering if this originally was sold by a company putting out a product or if they just made those. I liked these drinking glasses very much, but there was only one. Anything with a rainbow pattern, I always take a double look. People love a good rainbow stripe. Okay, I don't know why I even picked this up. <laughs> that was really, oh, here I'm trying to balance it upside down so I could look at what the bottom says. And that is why my nails are just horrible. Between all of the material I touch and all of the scraping with the nails. Now I do have Scotty Peelers for at home, but I don't carry Scotty Peelers in my handbag. And I don't know what about this piece is capturing my attention. It's definitely a student piece. This tin is a cookie tin, but there was something inside, somebody's candle collection. Milton Hershey School is a large school in our area and I often find items with their logo on it. I liked the pattern on that vase, but it had a chip. It's funny I find when a fad comes out like beer making at home or, you know, just different things that really show what time period we were in. And then all of a sudden the thrift store gets flooded with it. So quite a few products do that, like LuLaRoe clothing, you know, any kind of beer or wine making at home. I'm sure we're going to be seeing a lot of hand sanitizer and a lot of masks in the thrift stores in the future. I found that interesting. A doorknob coat hook, I guess we're gonna call it. Just a wall mounted. Now I think this piece might have been similar to the bowl and here is another jug. And I'm realizing they're from like a home goods store. And here we are onto the bin clothing. So this is their form of an outlet. The items are $1.05 a piece. Now, could I find items in here that would bring enough profit? Yes, but enough profit to warrant this kind of work? No, I won't take that chance. The probability is probably very low that I would find something really amazing. Here I'm looking at a painting. So this first painting catches my attention. I realize there's a second. Would have been nice if I focused the camera, <laughs> if I shot the camera on the painting. And it is artist signed, which I won't say their name out loud, <laughs> but I did Google that name and did not come up with anything. I 
As I'm watching this back, those blue bowls caught my attention. I don't know that I looked at them. And here we find the treasure from the day. I just love this. This is a made in Italy alabaster fruit compote. Is it even called a pedestal bowl? I believe this originally came with glass or carved stone fruit in it. I have seen this before. Unfortunately, the carved fruit was not there, but this is a keeper. Here I'm showing you a shot to see that this is made of stone. This was not a glass bowl. And right after the stone bowl, I find two carved wood spoon racks. Yep, people still collect spoons. Now, I'm not gonna tell you that these are gonna fly out of my store. They'll sit for a while. But at a $2 buy-in price, they were in really nice condition with a little dust. And the basket with the roses is a very pretty pattern for a country house. So I went ahead and picked up both of those. So that is a little shop with me in the East Earl Goodwill store located in East Earl, Pennsylvania. If you find yourself in the area and you do some thrifting there, there is also a wonderful buffet place called Shady Maple. And Shady Maple is huge. I don't know how the buffet is running during these pandemic times, but if they are open and you are not against going to a buffet, really worth checking out. They also have a great gift shop and the place is very large. I believe it's a hotel also. Thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours.